thank you uh, everyone to be here today and uh, I will tell you the story about how we in the JP uh, Politikens uh, Media Group are adopting uh, Kubernetes to the AI team. Uh, it's all started in a department where I've been a part of. It's uh, called Extrablad. Extrablad is one of the last uh, media, uh, news media in Denmark. We have more than uh, one and a half million of unique uh, readers every single month. Back in February 2021, we uh, realized we uh, need uh, to focus more on machine learning. And we also, also need uh, to build a, a platform uh, to delivering more relevant content and uh, uh, to our readers for using uh, um, a custom building uh, recommender systems. To make this happen, we uh, had a, a, a team of uh, four ML specialists where I'm trying again. <coughs> to make this happening, we have a, a team of four ML uh, specialists who would be the primary user of this platform. Uh, we also had uh, two uh, um, infrastructure engineers to build uh, this platform based on what uh, the ML specialist uh, needed. We were involved in a research project in Denmark and uh, we were needed this platform to support prototyping of different machine learning models. The platform should help us to test, train and serve the model very quickly uh, because the team was small we did not have um, months to research before we started the, the project. We had to use the internal knowledge uh, we already had and uh, use the knowledge uh, in, the, in the best way we could. It was uh, important uh, we uh, make this uh, platform simple so it's uh, become easy for the ML uh, specialists to train uh, the models. It also is important we have the easy way to, uh, to automatically serve the models and uh, service and replacing the, the current running version uh, with the new one. ML specialists uh, should be enabled to create prototyping uh, of the models uh, and will be enabled to using different frameworks like uh, 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 PyTorch and TensorFlow. It's important the uh, ML specialists uh, keep up the normally workflow and uh, not changing anything because we don't want uh, to be um, locked on a single framework at that point. ML specialists should be, in set up, uh, should be enabled to set up their own model at, uh, to training and choosing the way they want to deploy it. It's important that work uh, do not getting blocked by the infrastructure team. Since we didn't have the test environment uh, right now, it was really important for the ML specialist uh, to spot any kind of issues very quickly uh, of if the model uh, failed when it's uh, training or get served. I mean, we didn't have months to, to do the research before we started, so um, we want uh, a full control over the machine learning uh, platform and uh, we want it uh, very fast. We also want uh, to save the time on potential errors and security risk so we decided to use the management resources. In that way, our infrastructure engineers uh, could avoid the midnight uh, panic attack. You know, it's not uh, very fun to debug a production environment where you're half asleep and you're sitting in your PMS. The chaos is uh, started uh, out with a clear version uh, of what we had in the mind. But over the time, its uh, infrastructure become the more complex and more difficult to manage and it become much more challenging for the new team members to uh, understand what is going on and uh, how to use the platform. A change that should be in very simple uh, and fast to deploy become into the very long uh, terms of uh, complicated processes and updates uh, become very uh, challenging. The freedom we, uh, we appreciate from the beginning is starting to fade. Since we only had two infrastructure engineers on the team, we need to rely more on the management resources and accept the trade-off uh, we faced. Our ML specialists uh, faced strict limitations on how they could uh, train the model uh, and deploy them. 
this result in, uh, in even small issues could become a very uh, big challenge to fix. It was a challenge to test uh, new software that wasn't related to the model. Uh, uh, one example could be if the model uh, should uh, require some kind of software uh, when you're training. Uh, that's kind of flexibility, we could not uh, do that. So, to change our email platform, we need to understand uh, how the cloud provides resources, infrastructure as code, and how the resources are connected together. You had to understand the platform design and the truly process before you make any, any changes to avoid any kind of uh, breaking it. When using a cloud, uh, cloud provider, there's always an uh, overhead uh, when selecting a compute resource because you, you cannot choose the exact amount of a, uh, a processor and memory you need. You must need uh, to accept the, the instance type that best fit you, uh, fits your need. It results in, uh, in waste of unused uh, resource, resources um, that will give you a higher cloud cost and more carbon waste. We learned a lot from the first version of our platform. Our ML specialists noticed several valuable things with this platform. It worked uh, well enough, even if the platform wasn't uh, really perfect. Limiting the ML specialist across the infrastructure and setting clear guidelines on how to uh, use the platform wasn't a huge help. It speed up the workflow, allowing them to uh, focus on the developing without any needs to learn the entire infrastructure. Having full control over our ML uh, platform has been a great benefit. It allows us to quickly identify and manage potential errors very fast, as well as assistance the, with the troubleshooting if needed from the um, infrastructure team. Our ML specialists appreciate how everything was integrated smoothly, including different frameworks and coding standards. This allows us to move quickly, deploy the model faster, enable prototyping and, uh, for the team, and better way of working. But we need to rethink the, the way we're building the ML platform, uh, focus on what we needed, uh, needed most, and where we potential uh, to streamline the things for better support uh, the um, ML specialists and engineers. We choose to build a new platform based on the existing platform's experience, not because the existing uh, platform didn't work, but because uh, uh, it did fully uh, meet up the, the new requirement we got. We still need to focus on to have the stable platform, so it's not uh, requiring too much attention from the infrastructure team. Any delays could slow down the ML uh, workflow, and that's something we, we couldn't uh, accept. We want to focus on the strengths of the existing ML platform and fix the challenges we have faced uh, so it's meet the new feature requirements. Our team is getting bigger, uh, new needs have come up, and we want a more user-friendly platform that doesn't require a PhD to succeed your daily work. Focus on the first three points, it was clear, our team need more flexibility than the existing platform have, like faster deployment cycles and simpler deployment process. So what have we learned to try it one more time? While we, uh, while we fixed some uh, challenges, we didn't fix uh, the main problem, like test tools, improving software testing, faster deployments, and we still have some issues when we, uh, when we are onboarding new uh, members. Even, uh, even with the new approach, we still have focus. Uh, we still have focus to have a stable platform by continue to use uh, the use the, the management resources. We didn't get the full flexibility we want, it, but it become easier for the ML engineers and specialists to do the daily work. We did not fix the problem by uh, choosing their own tools and letting them test the new software. Because, uh, because we took the configuration method from the exist version, there, was, uh, there wasn't much to change here. We used uh, a self-made uh, the YAML file configuration, and um, that's required every single developer need to read the documentation, which yeah, basically don't exist. It's mean a wrong syntax in the YAML field uh, will uh, easily lead to the problems. 
One day we got the information about we become a, a full AI unit uh, to the entire company. And uh, that's about 1,700 employees across, uh, across different uh, companies inside JP Politikens Media Group in Denmark. We knew from that day we had to uh, rethink our full strategy. Previously in the extra blood we had around 220 employees to support. We are now growing to the 15 people and now have uh, the responsibility to support uh, 1,700 employees. We quickly understand the value of the new theme uh, and we discussed the, our current situation, outlined the next steps and uh, setting the direction to the team to support the new reality. So it's time to start uh, to stop up and uh, rethink everything and ask, should we try uh, one more time to, to build it from scratch uh, again? Or should we uh, use an uh, existing ML product out there? Or what benefit did we get if we choose uh, Kubernetes? Trying to build, them, build and maintain a completely new uh, ML platform would cry a lot of extra uh, resources and, it will, uh, and we were pretty unsure about uh, we get the, the freedom we, we've, and flexibility we really want for the ML specialists. So we quickly decided to not uh, to try that again. There are many tools out there to help uh, ML specialists. We, uh, we spent a, a lot of time to test the different uh, products out there like MLflow and Metaflow. We got the major concern about become uh, window locked. To empower the ML specialist with the freedom to use Kubernetes. To empower the ML specialist with the, to the freedom. Can, can you hear me? Oh. Uh, to the freedom to use Kubernetes, they will get access to the, any tool they need. This ap uh, approach uh, builds on trust and show how we believe the skills and decisions, and not uh, to need to enforce the, the strict rules. If we had to choose an exist ML platform. Uh, I will not to be here to share the, the journey uh, to you today. So surprised we did not uh, choose the exist ML platforms uh, out there, and why not? We have compared uh, the effort and benefits uh, and found that using the exist uh, platform can lead to a, a different challenges out there uh, rather than the benefits we got uh, based on the test we, we, we do. We face problems when we update an exist platform uh, that uh, we didn't truly uh, uh, control. We got unexpected updates that disrupt our workflow uh, of uh, ML specialists that lead to big frustration. And it looked like some vendors out there was more interesting to get uh, selling the, the enterprise license rather than help uh, the community edition with the, with the box after updates. It was often difficult to understand what's happening because we have the limited flexibility and transparency in the whole process. New employees find it uh, difficult to learn how to work if they don't know the, the application, and it's adding more un unwanted uh, complexity to already uh, tech stack, which we're trying to, uh, to reduce. Our choose of Kubernetes are not, uh, are not because it's cheaper, more because it's provide exactly what we need and what we're really missing. We got a simple way to allocate the resources we need, like uh, the processor and memory to, the, to reduce the cost and the carbon waste. We can now uh, streamline the, our development process, helping them to fast identify and fix the problems. Kubernetes uh, allow the ML specialists to try out different softwares and frameworks without breaking uh, anything they're already running. So it's out, uh, allowed them to quickly test new ideas without uh, waiting for the whole infrastructure team. Because we now have the standardized uh, process and uh, have a clear, uh, clear documentation, um, our ML specialists can quickly learn the environment they need, uh, need from. This making the, the onboarding very fast and help them to work on projects faster and lowering the, the learning curve. We have a, a streamlining process and cutting down the complexity. We aim to allow the ML specialist to con uh, concentrate on development, testing, uh, instead of uh, getting stuck in the evil uh, infrastructure. After our transition to uh, Kubernetes as the primary infrastructure uh, for the ML team, 
we got much more than we have expected, which uh, has become very important of the part of the operation we do today. Using the GitOps principles uh, across our infrastructure allow the ML specialist to release new software quickly without uh, the worrying about disrupting exist applications. It becomes easy to, uh, to debug from logs and understand the outcome or reason of, um, for the failure without any frustration. If we run out of the resources, the Kubernetes would automatically scaling up and down based on the, what the resources in need. Uh, previous, previously, a large amount of uh, work was done locally and sending for testing. Then we were waiting, uh, waiting probably weeks for feedback and from other employees uh, before it's, it's getting to deploy for the production. We have an, now a process, that process is, is the email specialist can now run the entire workflow at their own. We have now uh, a much better observability with metrics, so both the specialists and the infrastructure engineers uh, can receive the feedback uh, much faster. With Kubernetes, we now have the great freedom to use zero trust, and it feels uh, easier to maintain a more secure infrastructure. Thanks to GitOps uh, principles, they allow, uh, they're allowing everyone on the team to have access to the manifest, manifest files, that's making uh, it completely transparent and of what you expect. So it's time to show the infrastructure we have uh, on Kubernetes today. And you're probably wondering about uh, should the ML specialist uh, learn, um, learn the entire infrastructure before they come to doing the work, or what happening with the, with the very simple uh, infrastructure we, we're aiming to. As you can see, I have uh, highlighting the, the area about what the ML specialist basically need to focus on, and uh, and what did they focus on to get the work done and nothing else. They need to understand the basic of Kubernetes manifest and rely on the exist uh, Helm charts to, for sharing use. It's allowing them to learn over time and save a lot of time for for those that are new new for Kubernetes and making the adoption very quickly. All aspects outside the orange box are, are managed by the infrastructure team to ensure the operation uh, do not disturb the ML team. It's time to showing the, the tech stack, so, so we're using inside the Kubernetes rather than just uh, showing you a simple uh, logos. I will explain a little bit about uh, why we have chosen it. About the automation, we have uh, using Flux in the place where we uh, completely, uh, where it's complete of the GitOps process. So we can say the Git repository is the single uh, source of truth. Email specialists can easily use the pre-built Helm charts for the task and they can uh, request new ones if needed. All of our infrastructure is uh, fully visible for the team uh, on GitHub. Security and networking. To improve the security between the nodes and uh, and the pods with the uh, encryption enabled, we, uh, we have using the Cilium to, uh, to control that and we use it for the network policy too. To provide uh, automated SSL certifications, we have used Chartmania with uh, integrated uh, well with the Cilium and the Gateway API. By using the Gateway API, we have, the, we have opened up for more options. Uh, including the uh, ability to work with layer four network traffic together with Cilium and not only the layer seven uh, as default. This general gives us more control over the network traffic and allow us to, uh, to use the traffic mirroring uh, between different pods if needed. And on AWS, uh, AWS network load balancer, it's uh, much cheaper than if you use the application load balancer. I think it's around three times, three to four times cheaper. We use the AWS load balancer to automatically create networks, uh, network and application load balancer with this Cilium and uh, Gateway API. It's a very common approach when you are hosted on EQS and AWS. Observability, we have picked Prometheus to collect uh, metrics from the cluster and applications uh, and models. This enable uh, us to trigger alerts um, based on the metrics outcome if there is an error and, and training. If there is an error in a training or serving, 
or if we just need uh, more resources for the cluster. We use Grafana as a dashboard tool integrated with uh, Prometheus to display important data. And now it's visible, uh, visible for both the uh, infrastructure team and for the ML team with the same matrix. We have chosen to use Vector from Datadog as the log collector, which send logs from uh, Kubernetes to CloudWatch on AWS. There are other methods out there to, to do the same, but uh, we found it's relatively easy to set up and allow to change the log endpoints if needed later. For us, the, uh, the primary focus was to ensure that the logs from the nodes doesn't uh, not, uh, not uh, getting loosed when, uh, when you update the node and rebooting. And uh, the other approach is we need uh, all the ML specialists to get uh, a log visible so they don't need to kubectl uh, tool. To observe the networking, se networking security and the traffic flow, we are use Hubble, which has come with the Cilium. This enables us to, to, get, to get a, a clean uh, network traffic view uh, when you just enable it. And then we have the sc scalability. When the node's running out of the resources, we use Capenta as the on node autoscaler. We have just uh, defined some rules that's allowing the, the, the nodes to scaling up and down inside the AWS. We usually use the Kubernetes uh, metric API to collect metrics from the system, which can be used both for the usability and for the scaling purpose. We are using the built-in HPA for Kubernetes for, uh, for pod autoscaling. We are using uh, that to scale pods up and down based on the CPU, memory, or custom matrix. It has been a very good day today. Um, it's uh, draining me a lot of uh, energy, so I will just uh, send a message out, and uh, I'm uh, pretty nervous here. So thank you for staying here, and uh, thanks. If you have any questions, you can just, uh, yeah. Since this stack was in AWS, uh, did you encounter any scale, uh, like a cap issues in terms of? Um, I, th I think the sound should be a little higher because I can, I'm very hard to hear you. Yeah, I was asking if uh, there was any cap issues uh, for any resources. Uh, like you were using AWS, right? So yeah. And how did you manage? We uh, we we don't have a cap, and that we uh, when we're scaling the nodes up and down, we use Capenta. So you need uh, to uh, to connect your your resources uh, inside the, the Kubernetes with your resources in in AWS. And I think it's scaled with uh, a half minutes or something like that. It's, it's very quick. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you.